When I'm sketching and drawing, I'm really not filtering myself at all. Probably the only place I'm not filtering myself. My own experiences influence all of my work, really, because um, I think that that's my primary lens for just kind of looking at the world and then observing the world. How I approach cartooning and just like illustration in general is that I'm gonna be an expert on my experience and then try to communicate that. I'm Liz Montague, I'm 24 years old and I'm a cartoonist and illustrator. I did not consider myself a creative kid growing up. I think I just had really high standards of what I thought creative was. I've gotten a lot of really good responses to my work, especially the Liz at Large cartoons, because I think that being able to see like feelings that you have represented maybe in someone who doesn't look like you um, can be a really powerful experience. I've been published in The New Yorker four times. I found out that I was likely the first black woman to be featured in The New Yorker um, over email. It's an audience that I wasn't entirely used to, because I mean, I had before that just been making cartoons for myself and then having to think about this entire global brand is a bit intimidating. Cartoons definitely started out as just like a conduit for understanding. I was initially drawn to illustration as a kid because I could better explain what I was thinking in my head in pictures. And then I think as I got older, I realized more and more that like how I would interpret things in my head. And then like, for example, the movies never did look like how I thought they would. And that largely was because like the people in it never ever looked like me. And I was just like, what the heck? How come in my head, everybody looks like me? I was... 22 at my first job and I was like at my desk on Instagram scrolling through the New Yorker cartoons Instagram and um, just noticed that all of the cartoons were white and that that was probably the case because everyone making them was white and all the editors looking at them were white and then it's just like it's so normalized that no one sees it. I was like oh maybe they just don't know and just like hit the email button and then didn't expect at all to get a response. I was on Amtrak and I got in the email and I freaked out and was just like, oh my gosh, they actually read these emails, who knew? And it just basically said that, you know, she was aware and like really wanted to, you know, make a change and asked if I had anyone in mind. And I was just like, you know, I, I could take a stab at this. It was not immediate. Like I, I must have submitted like 50 cartoons before I got one published. So the first cartoon that was published in The New Yorker was the Per My Last Email one, and it's of two black women on a roof. Um, there's like the bat signal, only it says Per My Last Email, and it says something along the lines of like, we've, we've done all we can. I was really curious at first if I was the first black woman to have a cartoon published in The New Yorker, um, just because the whole reason that I had re reached out in the first place was because, you know, a lot of the cartoons looked the same. I think diversity and representation in uh, cartooning and illustration are important. I mean, because I think unless you're from the communities that are missing, usually you can't really tell that you're missing. And I think that there's a really high human cost to inaccurately portraying something. For my process just with drawing, I normally start out with a physical sketch and then I transfer it to my iPad and then a line layer and then I add color, background, um, and then I always do the text last. Aside from The New Yorker, I have my cartoons on Instagram for my Liz at Large series, which is now also weekly in the Washington City paper, and it features my childhood dog. She kind of plays the role as my higher self, my higher consciousness. The human characters in Liz at Large are mainly like the worst parts of myself, the most anxious, and then just seeing the two of them interact. I've really been able to create like a cool community of people through Liz at Large, especially on Instagram. Growing up with social media is definitely kind of a double-edged sword, but I think it's a tool like anything else. Like a ballpoint pen could be like a weapon, and depending on whose hands it's in. Our generation is getting a lot better at using all the good parts. I wanted to get back into drawing Liz at Large on a regular basis and just like having that accountability and then reached out to Kayla at Washington City Paper, um, who's the arts editor, and talked about getting a column there and she was all for it and was a huge advocate for me. Good. Let's go in the conference room and chat. Yes. I usually do the captions first. This one I didn't. Oh, okay. I always do the this one first because this is the size that's in the paper and then I do the social media oh. size afterward. I, when I was younger, I didn't had no idea that I would be doing cartoons or art or anything for a living. The most important thing I've learned is to not judge yourself so harshly. At least for me, the parts that I judge myself the most for are usually the parts that other people relate to the most. That's a big part of why I'm trying to 
be visible. I've tried to be pretty active in being like, hey, I'm a person and I'm a person who probably like looks like a lot of you and who's the same age as a lot of you. And like, if I did this, you can do this. 